Care is needed when naming a HomeKit device. John, have you heard about this uh, new bug with the Apple HomeKit naming problem? Yeah, it, it's kind of an interesting thing. There, there's this researcher, Trevor Spiniolis, who's found a couple of other issues. I probably butchered his name. Sorry, Trevor. <laughs> but uh, So what he discovered, and, and it's kind of that fuzzing attack that you hear of and we talk about a lot, you know, where you, you send or create a, a name or a packet that's extra large, you know, that's out of bounds. And what he discovered with HomeKit, the Apple HomeKit, which is that API that you control devices in your house, whether it be your your cameras or your your doorbells or whatever, you know, your garage door opener, which I have, <laughs> is uh, you know, it's all HomeKit. And he found that if if somebody named one of those HomeKit devices with a character string more than 500,000 or 500,000 or larger. And he didn't really go into details like, is it, what's the exact number? He just said 500,000. And what happens is, is that it essentially crashes your iPhone, you know, your I, Apple iOS device. You walk in with an Apple iOS device thinking you're gonna manage a device on this home network that's so large and it crashes the phone. And you're thinking, oh, okay, great. I crashed the phone. Well, the problem is, if you think about how an Apple phone works, most of us do, we, we back those things up to iCloud. And so what happens is, as soon as that phone comes back, it restores itself, and guess what it does again? Boom, <laughs> right back down again. So it's a, kind of an, a, a, a constant crashing based upon how this name is too large in the HomeKit environment. And that's kind of a, you know, a, a problem you know, it's, it's probably not an issue if you're your own home and doing it, but if somebody were to create a fake network or someone were to intrude on your home and fiddle with your stuff, it, it, it's something just to consider. Um, Apple has not patched this yet. Just be aware. It's, you know, it's probably, you know, it's so it's something just to be, you know, we always like we were talking in the last story, keep your stuff updated and it usually protects problems. Well, guess what? This one doesn't. <laughs> this one's still out there. So there isn't there isn't a fix for this yet, but it is something just to be aware that, you know, um, I guess from a recommendation perspective, you know, don't let people monkey around with your home kit settings, you know, <laughs> unless you're watching them. And and, and really, um, you know, if you're connecting to your home, make sure you're connected to your home. Make sure it's not a fake network that you're connecting to. So I, I don't know, guys. What do you what do you what are y'all thinking about this particular issue? I think the biggest risk to me in my home is a TikTok video challenge <clears throat> where <laughs> my kid just like pick it up and uh, someone on the internet says like, "Hey, why don't you do this?" and then they try it and uh, you know it causes the problem. That's like one of the. I mean, surprisingly, one of the most valid ways I see this working in my household <laughs> um, is, is just, uh, you know, having fun or, 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 or seeing if it works and then coming to dad to find out, like, how do I get out of this DDoS loop? That's not what I meant uh, for, for it. That's not how I meant for it to happen. Um, I see a lot of people kind of having fun this way, um, especially with the next generation. I've seen my kids get into trouble a lot, you know. Yeah. like trying to repeat different things that they've seen or sometimes they just tell me and I'm like, oh, absolutely not. You might get punished just for talking about it. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, vulnerabilities like this to me, it's again, making all of us at home have to be network and system administrators because you're managing a small little network of devices and every year you put just a, a little bit more there without realizing it. So your home network is probably growing by like five to 10% a year, but who thinks about it that way? I don't think anyone does really. You raised an interesting um, uh, point about the TikTok video. I mean, that you, know, you see a lot of people doing TikTok challenges and that's a very valid social engineering, you know, kind of avenue to get people to do something that could have repercussions. I can also see this being, you know, 
something that a technically astute uh, person might do as a prank on some mm-hmm. other less technically astute um, friends, coworkers, frenemies, whatever they call them uh, these days. Um, but, you know, what I'm curious about is if this research isn't going to be then a springboard into something else before it eventually ends up getting patched. Because, you know, if that device is crashing, that half million characters overwrote something in memory that it shouldn't have, you know, just generally speaking, right? Yeah. Um, so what, is, what does that mean for the sandbox um, of the iOS, you know, ecosystem? You know, what, you know, is there some other more impactful way that yeah. this might be used, right? And, and, and that would be, it'll be interesting to see if there's something that comes out around that, you know, mm-hmm. you know based on this. Yeah, it's, it's a good point, because if you think back to even a couple of years back when we had stage fright come out, you know, so it's a kind of a similar thing. A buffer overflows turn into RCEs really easily, you know, if, if, if you especially, you know, either the information disclosure or RCE is, is a pretty common you know, result of a, of a buffer overflow. So you, you, you have to suspect that's a good point. You know, I didn't I've not seen as part of this research, but you're, you're right. What's the next step? What's the next thing? 